Okay, um, we're working on section 8.4, and I think I'm going to go over some odd numbers tonight. So let's start with number one. This should be pretty simple. Um, they've told us, they've given us the square root of 20, and we're just supposed to make that into a simpler form. So you're not going to be able to take the plane square root of 20. 20 is not a perfect square but it does have a perfect square in it somewhere. Let's think about um, uh, the lowest perfect square would be 4. 20 does have a 4 because we know that 20 is made up of 4 times 5. So knowing that, I'm going to write my 20 again under a root sign and I'm going to write it like this. That still makes 20. Which one of these can I take out? I can take out the 4, so I'm going to make it 2 on the outside. When you take out a square root of 4, um, you may be, if you're not comfortable with square roots yet, you may be thinking, oh, I'll just put a 4 on the outside. No, it, you can't put a whole 4 on the outside if it came from a 4 under the root. Um, yeah, if you just do it enough times, you'll probably get used to that. So, take out the 4, you got a 2 times the square root of 5. The 5 had to stay under there. That is as simple as we can go, so that's your answer. Your answers will come out looking like that. Something on the outside, something on the inside of that root. Alright, let's do number three. They've given a square root of 32. Again, 32 is not a perfect square. It won't come out perfectly even, like if they had given us a perfect square would be if they had said square root of 25. Well, we all know that's just 5. They're not going to give you easy stuff like that. They're, you're going to have to do a little more work. So let's think, what's in 32? Um, 4 is in 32. Even better than that, 16 is actually in 32. 16 times 2 is 32. Now, if you hadn't thought of 16 and you'd only remembered 4, you would have done your work. You'd have said, okay, 4, 4 is a perfect square. I'm dealing with a square root. Remember there's an invisible 2 here. I'm dealing with a square root, so I might try to use 4. So let's let's pretend that for a second. How many times does 4 go into 32? Hopefully you know that 8 times 4 is 32. There's, that really does no use to long division that. <laughs> you just need to know that by heart. 8 times 4 is 32. So I would have taken that um, right there and said 4 times 8. Well, guess what? The 8 can come can be broken down into another perfect square. 4 times 4 times 2. This 8 is made up of 4 times 2. So all of these, you could take out 2 of these right here. The 4 will come out to be a 2. And the other 4 will come out to be a 2. And then all that's left on the inside is something that could not come out. Because it's not a perfect square. Just the 2. So you'd have had... 4 times the square root of 2, and that would be your answer. I did it the long way to show that if you didn't think of 16, you could have still worked it out. However, if you had done it with 16, and you had known that 16 times 2 makes 32, you would have gone a little bit faster. You would have said, okay, square root of 16, that's going to come out and be a, a whole 4 times square root of 2. Look at the step, steps that I saved. So hopefully you'll get comfortable enough um, doing your work uh, and, and finding bigger perfect square roots that will help you get done faster and uh, not leave as much room to make a, a little mistake that will throw your whole problem off. Okay, let's do number five. I hope you can get some focus. Okay. Um, okay, now we're not dealing with a square root. We've got a cubed root of 108. That just means you have to sort of change the wavelength you're thinking on. You have to stop thinking about square, perfect square numbers and start thinking about what cubes do I know that could go into 108. Well, the lowest uh, cube that I can think of would be 2 cubed, which is 8. Um, that's a lot of 8s. I want to get a little higher than that. 3 cubed is 27. And using our trick, if you know this trick, if you don't, I'll tell you real quick. You can count up all, num all of the um, numbers, the single digits in a number. If they add up to something, to a multiple of 3, then you know 3 will go in there. So 1 plus 0 plus 8, that makes 9. Yeah, that's a multiple of 3. I know 3 can go in there. 
So, long story short, when I was saying find a cube, 3 cubed is 27. So, knowing that 3 can go in there makes me hopeful that maybe I can get a 27 out of it and be able to take something out. We're always trying to get something out of the radical to make it simpler. Okay, too much talking, sorry. Um, so, let's see. 108 divided by 27. Okay. Brain freeze moment. Um, okay, 4. Let's try 4. 4 times 7 is 28. 4 times 2 is 8. Plus 2 is 10. Yes. So 4 times 27 makes 108. You can write a note to yourself that if that helps you be comfortable. Never, never feel bad for writing extra steps if that helps you be more comfortable doing the problem. Okay, so 27 times 4. I'm going to write that in there. Don't forget your index. We're dealing with cubes. So, since we're dealing with cubes, I can't take that 4 out of there. That's a perfect square. But I can take the 27 out. I am going to write myself one more step. And you can too if this makes it easier for you. I've just written my 27 as a 3 cubed. That way you can kind of understand anything cubed under a cubed root. You just take that anything, just the single number, you take that out. The 3 gets free. Not a 27, just the 3. And the 4 stays under. And don't forget my index. So that is your answer. When you write your index, of course you always want to... 3. You always want to be sure that you and your teacher who's checking your work don't think you wrote that to be a 3 cubed. You meant it 3 times cubed root of 4. That's just a detail. Alright, let's do number 7. Alright, number 7 is the fourth root of 162. Don't stress when you see a big number, just start thinking, what can I break it into? And try stuff out. Okay, so fourth root. Um, fourth root, so 2 to the fourth, that would be 16. 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 6, that would be 16. Uh, let's get a little higher than that. Um, could a 3 go into here, I wonder? 1 and 6 is 7, 7 and 2 is 9. A 3 could go into here. What about 3 to the fourth? We know 3 cubed is 27. 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. What about another 3 to make it 3, fourth, three to the fourth? That would be 27 times 3. 27 times 3 is 81. You can do the math if you like. I've just done it enough times. 81. Ah! That will go into 162. 81 plus 81 makes 101 is 2, 8 and 8 is Perfect. So, 162 will break up into an 81 times a 2. So now I'm going to write that down. I'm going to write 81 times 2. And it's a fourth root. Why did I go and grab 81? It's because we already talked about it being a fourth number, whatever you want to call that. Uh, so now I'm going to write it as, I already wrote the 81. Now I'm going to write that extra step that you can write too if it makes you feel good. 3 to the fourth times 2. Just to make it clear that when we have a fourth root, something to the fourth, you take out just the something. So my three will come out. It'll be three times the fourth root of two. That is my answer. All right, let's do number nine. Let me check my focus here. Here we go. All right, number nine. That is the square root of 72a cubed square root of 72a cubed. All right, change your train of thought here. We're dealing with squares. What squares do we know that could go into 72? Um, what will go into? Uh, four, 4 is a square. Let's get a little higher than that. 16 is a perfect square. Let's see if we can go higher than that. 25? No. That's 5 times 5. What's 6 times 6? 36. 36. So yeah, 4 would have gone into this. You'd have just had more steps. But I'm going to try 36 because I think I actually know that 36 plus 36 makes 3, 3, 6, 72. Perfect. So we're going to break it down into 36 times 2. 
So I'm going to write that 36 times 2 and the a cubed. Let's not forget to write that out. I'm going to break the a cubed up into something that is a that is a square, a perfect square that I can take out. So I'm going to break it into a squared times a to the 1. Those would, if you multiplied them back, a squared just means a times a. So times a to the 1. That would make a cubed again if you needed to. Just know that we're not changing numbers, we're just breaking them up. Okay, so what will come out of this, I wonder? I will write my last step, which is 6 squared times 2 times a squared times a to the 1. I'm just writing extra stuff. So, it's a square root, so we can take anything being squared out. The 6 will come out to be just a plain 6. The a squared will come out to be just a plain a. Okay, so now what's left under there are the ones that weren't perfect squares, the 2 and the a. 6a times the square root of 2a, that is your answer. Alright, let's do number 11. We're just doing some odd numbers tonight. 11 is also a square root, so don't have to adjust our thinking just yet. Alright, so let's think squares, the perfect squares that will go into 128. Maybe something kind of higher. 36? Uh, what's above 36? That's 6 times 6. 7 times 7, 49. Eh. 8 times 8, 64. Uh, that sort of rings true. I think two of those will make a perfect 128. 4 and 4 is 8. 6 and 6 is... Okay, so... Let me pick back up where I was. Camera stopped on me. Alright, we yes, 64 did add up to be 128. So, we're going to say 64 times 2, under here, times, I'm going to break my c cubed up into c squared times c to the 1. Okay, so 64, that's 8 squared, right? So, let's just write that to make things clear to ourselves. Okay, so I've written it all out. Don't be afraid to write lots of steps. Okay, so anything squared under a square root will come out to just that base number. So the 8 will come out because that's the square root of 64. The 2 will not come out. Oh, I'm sorry. Another one will come out beside the 8, and that's the C right there. 8c times the square root of 2c. These two came out. These two did not. That's your answer for 11. Okay, let's do number 13. Okay, number 13 I have written out here is the fifth root of negative 486. Don't let a negative get you scared. We know that if it's a fifth root or a cubed root or something, let me write that 5 a little clearer for you. If it's something odd, then you know you've got a lot of odd numbers. If it's three odd numbers, you've got negative times negative makes positive times another negative will make a negative. So fifth root, yeah, it'll make a negative. That'll work out. Um, let's think of some numbers that we know are perfect fifths. Um, two to the fifth, that is two times two is four times two is eight times two is 16 times two is 32. So would 32 go into 46? Um, if you don't want to just get caught up doing long math, you can just try it on your calculator, if that's okay with your teacher. 486 divided by 32. I want to see if it will go in evenly. No, it won't go in evenly. It gives me all that. Let's try something else. What's 3 to the 5th, maybe? Notice when you 5th stuff, they get big really fast. So don't, don't start out with... 16 or something. Let's start kind of little. 3 times 3, 3, 3, 3. That all makes 243. That actually sounds kind of hopeful. Um, 243, you probably already figured it out. 243, 2 times, is going to make 486. So, done some work there. I guess I'll just leave that there and right below here I'm going to write continue my problem. Fifth root, this time I'm going to break it up. Negative 243 
times 2. Notice I wrote a negative still because it's a negative 486. One of your numbers needs to be negative. It's going to work out to let this one be negative. I'll show you why. So negative 243, that's just 3 to the 5th. So I'm going to write it again, that step where I write my number to its power. The fifth root of negative 3 to the 5th, when you multiply that negative 3 five times, your answer will be negative. Let's do it right here. Negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3. Negative times negative is a positive 9. Positive 9 times negative 3 is negative 27. Negative 27 times a negative 3 is a positive 81. Last one is going to, negatives are going to win out. 81 times negative 3, if you want to do that on your calculator to check the work, 81 times 3, I'm not going to worry about the negative, we know what sign to use, makes 243. So, 81 times negative 3 makes negative 243. So, we are definitely on the right track. Uh, from right here, if you have a fifth, something to the fifth under a fifth root, just take out that something. Negative 3 gets to come out and be free. And don't forget your index. That is way too squished in there. Negative 3 gets to come out. 2 has to stay under, and don't forget your index. Alright, that is our answer. That's a lot simpler than we started out with. And that's what the goal is for these problems in 8.4a. Alright, number 15. Make sure we're still in focus down there, yeah. Number 15. Okay, we're back into square roots. 98. A cubed B to the fourth C. Alright, let's think. What kind of square, perfect square numbers can come out at 98? Um well uh perfect square, perfect square 16. Um next up from 16 is a 25. No. Let's try 16. Let's try what's up from 25. 6 and 6, 36. 36 and 36, I don't think that comes out right. No, that comes to 72. Well, let's try a little up from 36 and see. 49. 36 is 6 times 6. 7 times 7 is 49. Let's try 49. Uh, I think that's going to work. 49 and 49 makes 98. Cool. So let's write that out. 98 is made up of 49 times 2. A cubed, let's break that up. A squared times A. B fourth, we don't have to break that up. 4 is a perfect square. It'll just come out and be a B squared. C, we, that is going to have to stay under there. So what will come out? The 49 will come out. The A squared will come out. The B fourth will come out. Square root of 49 is just 7. I'm not worrying about that other step. Um, hopefully you're comfortable with that by now. The square root of a squared is just a. Square root of b to the fourth is b squared. And then I'm going to write my radical and write all the others that had to stay in. 2 didn't come out, a didn't come out, c didn't come out. So your answer is 7ab squared times the square root of 2ac. And that is the order they would like you to write them. They'd like the number first and then alphabetical order for other things. Okay, let's do number 17. Make sure that's in focus. Okay, number 17. Okay, they didn't give it to us under a radical, but hopefully you'll be comfortable with switching it into being under a radical. All of these numbers, 245, a to the 6, y to the negative 4, they're all being multiplied. They're all to the 1 half power. Remember when you see a exponent that is fractional, um, the top part tells you the tells you the power of the number under the exponent, the power that goes right here. 
Um, is it a cube? Is it a square? Or is it just to the one? And the one on the bottom goes outside. It tells you whether it's a square root, a cube root, a fourth root. This is a square root. So you could write your two here. I'm not going to worry about it because anytime you see a radical, it's given that it's a square root unless you write a three or a four or a five under there. So that tells us it's a square root of all this stuff. So rewrite it under the radical. 245 times a to the sixth times y to the negative four. And let's start working that out. Um, 245, yeah, that sounds kind of like you could get a 25 out of, well, no, you couldn't. Let me think. Four, six, two, can't get a three out of there. Let's try getting 25 out. out. That won't work. Let's try getting, hmm. Perfect square. I wonder if the 49 will work again. Let's try 7. 7's kind of weird sometimes. 245. I'll just do it on the calculator. 245 divided by 49. Please work. Yes. Okay. Um, hopefully you saw that. There you go. Anyway, do it on your calculator if you want to. But 245 divided by 49 makes 5. So that's how we know its factors are 49 times 5. All right, let's write that out. 49 times 5 and the a to the 6th. a to the 6th, the square root of a to the 6th is just what two numbers the same a's will make a to the 6th. Well, you know you add exponents, so a3 times a a cubed times a cubed would be a to the sixth. So I'm not even going to worry about breaking that up. I know I can work it. Uh, y to the negative fourth. That is a negative exponent. There's really not a way to get two of the same y. You could have y squared times y negative two, but they wouldn't be the same to make that negative four. I think we're going to need to move this to the bottom before we do anything else to it. So let's just go ahead and do that. When you move something onto the bottom, yes, it'll have to stay under a root, but it will at least get to be a y to the positive 4 right there. So, now that I've got that sorted out, just take your next step down. Square root of 49 is 7, so the 7 gets to come out. Um, square root of, well, 5 will not come out, but a to the 6 will come out. We talked about that. a cubed and the 5 stays under. Let's, now let's take care of the bottom. Take care of that y. Square root of now a positive y to the fourth or y to the positive fourth. That will just be y squared. So our y squared is happily on the bottom. Now if we wanted to bring it up we could. Um, I'm not sure if Rebecca wants it all positive. Let's see. They didn't really specify. Let me check the answer key. For number 17, they do want uh, the y squared to stay on the bottom so that it, it will be a positive exponent. All right, so when, when this is your answer right here, they like for you to take your anything under a radical and write it to the side. It still counts as being in the numerator, but they just like it that way. So that's how I wrote mine. This is how Becca would have you write it. 7a cubed over y squared, all your regulars, Okay, let them line up right. Sorry. 7a cubed over y squared. And then you scoot your radical one out to the side, kind of in the middle-ish. That's fine. Times square root of 5. Same, same number, just a different way to write it. And that's your answer. All right, let's try number 19. 